Okay, we're going to be looking at the process of DNA replication. DNA replication happens during the S phase of interphase. In order for a pair of cystic chromatids to actually exist, you have to start with one chromosome and then actually turn it into an exact copy that's attached to it. And so we're going to learn about that process. So quick review, when you're looking at a DNA molecule, the bases that are in there are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Remember that A and T are, we call them complementary pairs, and then cytosine and guanine are complementary pairs. They bind to each other as well. The shape of DNA is usually described as a twisted ladder. There's a better name for it. It's called a double helix. So uh, make sure you understand that idea here. So how do I take one molecule that's this shape and actually replicate it, make a copy of it? So if this is one strand, how do I make another strand next to it? Well, there have been a couple ideas and we actually have figured out how it works. There are some really great experiments that you should check out about how they actually figured this out. But for now, uh, you can think about a couple ways to do this. If I want to copy anything, I can just put the original one down somewhere and then over here in this empty space, just try to construct the exact same thing from scratch by, what, by looking at this. And I could probably get it done, but DNA has a very clever way of uh, replicating itself. And if we use this as a model here, so this is two strands. So think of this, here's that ladder that's been untwisted. And if I take a look here, and these lines will represent some of the bases. So for example, A, if there's an A over here, I expect there to be a T over here. There's a C over here, a G over here, a G, C, you get the picture type of thing. So if that's one strand of DNA, what actually happens is the DNA actually unzips, unzips, and forms two separate strands temporarily. And then over here, what happens is each one of these becomes a template. So when this actually unzips, so if it actually kind of looks like a zipper. So let's uh, show this unzipping over here. So that's one side. And then here's the other side, unzipping. And what actually happens is when it unzips, it becomes two templates. And then what, what can actually happen over here is that each one of these can actually go. And uh, if this was A, for example, then a T will come over and then bind right there. If this is a C, then a G will come over. So I'm just going to uh, turn this into some kind of infinite cloner here. And then you can see we can start to build another strand over here, uh, piece by piece, nucleotide by nucleotide, if you remember these words, piece by piece, nucleotide by nucleotide. And we call this type of replication, the exact same thing happens on the other side, and we end up with uh, almost like two new DNA molecules. And this is what is actually happening. We call this type of replication semi-conservative replication. What that means is in the end, when this is all separated, when this is all separated over here, this will be an exact copy of this original parent, just the red molecule up here. This will be an exact copy. And this over here will also be an exact copy. Therefore, we have created two identical copies of that original molecule here using part of the original molecule. So actually, this process will continue all the way up and eventually the whole thing will split and then you'll end up with the two pieces of molecules right here. Okay, that's pretty much um, the idea. Let me flip this around so you can see. So these would be the two sister uh, the two daughter chromosomes, but they'd still be connected at some point, so we call them sister chromatids. So it's semi-conservative because part of the original parent molecule remains in the, uh, in the outcome, in the final daughter chromosomes. Uh, we call them sister chromatids as well. So each new double helix strand contains one of the original parent strands. That's why we call it semi-conservative. Very, very important uh, to know. Here's a fancier looking diagram showing some of these things. So here's that double helix kind of kind of uh, twisted up here. And what's going to happen is the, the actual DNA, the double helix, has to be unwound. And the unwinding happens by the, with the help of an enzyme. And this enzyme is going to move up this way. And as it moves up this way, it's going to be unzipping. The name of this enzyme is called helicase. Remember, think of it as an enzyme that undoes the helix. ASC is usually a... Uh, shortcut to help us remember that it's an enzyme here. 
So the same process actually happens over here. And so if this is an A, I can expect on this side, I'm going to be constructing, I'm going to be bringing a T over, a T over. And the next one would be a C, so on and so forth. And I could drag all these letters over here to show you what I'm trying to do. But in the end, we'd have this entire thing uh, connected, a new strand being produced. And each one of these new nucleotides I'm bringing over is being matched to the original letter here as a template. So this is, we call this complementary, complementary base pairing, complementary base pairing. And the same thing will actually happen over here. And one thing that I've left out that I'm going to back up a little bit so that you can actually see is how this actually works. Now for standard level, um, you just have to note that there is a particular enzyme here that helps to do this. And it's called, uh, it's this yellow bean here, it's called DNA polymerase. And DNA, DNA polymerase synthesizes a new DNA strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So if I take this actual molecule here, it's actually going to be moving up this way. And as it moves up this way, it's going to be constructing the new strand. So what is actually bringing the other, the other base? It's this DNA polymerase, which acts as a kind of uh, director, bringing together a partnership. It says, hello, I see that you are a T. Would you like me to introduce to you to your complementary base pair right here, which happens to be an A? Boom! And we're happy. And it moves along and says, hello. It's like a matchmaker, not a director, matchmaker, speed dating. Goes over to the G, says, hello, G. Would you like me to introduce you to your complementary base pair? G says, why, yes. Who would that be? DNA polymerase says, you know, it's C. This process continues on, so on and so forth. Again, shall I repeat the process? Hello, T. Shall I introduce you to you, your complementary base pair? T says, why, yes. Who might that be? DNA polymerase says, you know, it's always A. I tried to introduce you to C last time. You said no. T always goes with A. A always goes with T. So on and so forth. So it's going to build this entire thing. I could make a 30-minute video just doing that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but I'm not going to. Anyways, that's called DNA polymerase. And it's building, uh, one more detail, this 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Um, if you've paid attention to these numbers here, you see this, this 5. This 5 uh, refers to the particular location of one of the carbons on the deoxyribose molecule, which I'm not going to get into right now. But for now, uh, if one end is 5, then the other end is 3. And uh, the, the strand that's binding it will be opposite. So it'll be 3 and it'll be going, be going to 5. So if I see, follow this red strand here. If it's 5 up here, the other end of the red strand down here will be 3. If it's 3 over here, the other end of the blue strand will be a 5. So the key thing here is that this DNA polymerase molecule will only build in the 5 to 3 direction. So as it was introducing, its new strand has to go from the 5 prime to the 3 prime direction. So it's going boom, boom, boom. You can see this blue strand is being built in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. That's actually the 3 prime end. And when it introduces the next little guy right here, that will be the new 3 prime end. This confuses students a lot, but if you remember, DNA polymerase will only work in that particular way. You'll see how that actually works, which presents a problem on this side, which I'll mention briefly here, but we'll see in a subsequent video that if I'm going to construct a strand over here, we're presented with a problem because I know that this end over here has to be, if that's a five, this has to be a three over here, which means I cannot actually build this red strand in this direction. This one will be built going this way. So while this one on this side is moving up this way, the one over here is moving down this way. That must have created a question in your mind. So please post the questions that you have. And that is all. Just kidding. It's not all. I'm going to give you a little bit more. Really quickly, DNA replication. When cells go through mitosis, the DNA must be replicated. So what are the basic steps here? Uh, I told you the DNA gets unwound by an enzyme called helicase, really quickly. The original strands are used as templates to copy. And then DNA polymerase is the enzyme that adds new nucleotide to the strands to finish creating two new DNA strands that are identical to the original. Uh, the matching of A to T and C to G is called speed dating. Just kidding. Complementary base pairing. 
And this helps to conserve the base sequence of DNA. And uh, semi-conservative is a key term there. And we've just seen how helicase unwinds and DNA polymerase can help us to build. On one side, it's going this way. On the other side, it's going this way. And there are plenty of these around all the time. So now go ahead and post any questions that you have. All right, let's find the key command to close this.